to Abel, he picks up things. So, Brian, what's next to fund the schools? Well, it means that lawmakers need to get to work, and I spent time today talking with lawmakers on both sides of the aisle and how they do that with a new June 30th deadline overhead. School funding in Kansas is not in line with the Constitution, so says the state Supreme Court. I think that all of us realize that that has not been being taken care of and that the state was not fulfilling its constitutional obligation. The justice's decision today gives the state's legislature a mandate. Find a new formula by June 30th. Moving forward from that point on without a school funding formula puts the education funding at great risk as to will schools open, will the courts take control of the education process. Those are issues I believe that the legislature does not need to have laying before them. But just how quickly lawmakers will find a solution is still unclear. The uphill battle in front of them, though, is crystal clear. Finding a way out of a budget shortfall of more than $200 million this fiscal year, $500 million the next, and with this court decision, the need to, at the same time, pump anywhere from 350 to over $500 million more million per year in education. I think rationally, we have to look at all sources of revenue and, and put the best ideas in place. We owe the people of Kansas a well-run state. But Representatives Rooker, Clayton, and Burroughs are all optimistic that with a new, more moderate legislature, a solution will be found. We used to have a legislature now that is willing to take responsibility and to give the people of Kansas, again, a functional government. With the Supreme Court ruling, and a new bipartisan makeup of the legislature, we are closer today than we have been in the last six years of passing pro-education policy. Now, any new funding formula policy would be like any other bill of the legisl legislature. It'd have to go through committee, come out of there, have hearings before it would come to a vote on the floor. If that vote went through, it would then need a governor's signature or a two-thirds majority in both chambers to override that veto. And now all lawmakers I talk to expect that any of those could all come together underneath that June 30th deadline. Reporting live tonight in Overland Park, Brian Abel, 41 Action News.